If you have type 2 diabetes, there is a great chance you have or is currently taking metformin to control your blood sugar. Today I will cover everything you need to know about this widely used medication, including how it works in our body, benefits, how to take it, side effects and contraindications. Whether you are a diabetic looking for management tips or just curious about the science behind it, you're in for a treat. So keep your ears and eyes open and continue watching till the end to find out all about this wonder drug. Most of us know that metformin is used to treat type 2 diabetes. However, it also plays a crucial role in PCOS by reducing insulin levels, which leads to a decrease in luteinizing hormone as well as androgen levels. The normalization of these hormone levels helps to regulate the menstrual cycle and improve fertility in women trying to conceive. So let's get into the science and see how metformin works in our body. Imagine your body is like a car that needs fuel, in this case glucose, to run. When you eat, your body breaks down the food into glucose, which is like the fuel for your cells. However, in people with type 2 diabetes, there's a problem with this fuel system. The body either doesn't use the fuel properly or produces too much of it, leading to a high level of glucose in the body. Metformin helps to regulate blood glucose by doing three important things. It tells the liver to produce less glucose, also enhances insulin sensitivity so the cells become more receptive to insulin and glucose can enter the cells to be used for energy and lastly reduces the intestinal glucose absorption thus helps slow down the uptake of glucose from the food we eat into the bloodstream. As a result, metformin effectively lowers both basal and postprandial after meal blood glucose levels. Metformin is an oral medication typically prescribed at daily doses ranging from 500mg to 2550mg. It is usually started at a low dose and gradually increased to minimize potential side effects. There are two forms of metformin, immediate release form which you take about 2-3 to three times daily and extended release form which requires once daily dosing. Regardless of the form, it is best recommended to take metformin consistently at the same time every day with food. So now let's have a look at the side effects of metformin. The most common side effect is gastrointestinal related, such as diarrhea, stomach upset, nausea and vomiting, which can affect up to 30% of patients. Starting with a lower dose and gradually increasing it can help to minimize these effects. Also, taking it with food can lessen these effects as well. Some other side effects can include metallic taste in your mouth as well as loss of appetite which can lead to weight loss. Also, metformin can impact the absorption of vitamin B12 which can lead to a reduced level of this essential vitamin in the body over time. If you develop symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency such as fatigue, sensations of pins and needles, pale skin, mouth pain such as ulcers, fast heart rate, problems thinking or decreased appetite, Call your healthcare provider to get your vitamin B12 blood level checked. If deficiency is detected, you may need to take vitamin B12 supplements. One rare yet severe side effect you need to be aware of is lactic acidosis, which occurs at a rate of approximately 1 in 30,000 patients. Lactic acidosis occurs due to excessive buildup of lactic acid in the bloodstream, which can disrupt the body's pH balance and lead to a range of symptoms and complications such as weakness and fatigue, rapid and shortness of breath, confusion, cold or clammy skin and muscle pain. It can also lead to severe consequences such as hypotension, hypothermia and even death. There are several risk factors that contribute to developing lactic acidosis, such as kidney or liver impairment, unstable or severe heart failure, surgery, during times of severe illness or infections, which reduces oxygen delivery tissues such as sepsis or shock, alcoholism and certain medications. Let's have a further look into medications that could potentially interact with metformin. Metformin on its own rarely causes hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar. But when taken with other diabetic drugs such as insulin or glycoside, it can increase the risk of hypoglycemia. So you need to be cautious about this risk when you're taking these medications together. Conversely, there are some medications that can raise your blood sugar, which could make metformin less effective and cause hyperglycemia. Some examples of these medications include corticosteroids such as prednisone, thiazide diuretics, antipsychotic medications such as quetiapine or clozapine, phenytoin, and isoniazid. 
If you are taking any of these medications that can increase your blood sugar level, you should monitor your blood sugar levels more frequently. Another thing you need to be aware of is alcohol, especially heavy alcohol consumption, which can increase the risk of lactic acidosis. It also lowers your blood sugar, which increases the risk of hypoglycemia. Therefore, it is best to limit alcohol intake while taking metformin. Also, certain imaging procedures like CT scans with contrast dye can impact kidney function. Since metformin is cleared through the kidneys, using it with contrast agents can increase the risk of lactic acidosis. To mitigate this risk, your doctor might recommend temporarily stopping metformin before the procedure and restarting it later. Some medications may prevent your body from getting rid of metformin. When this happens, metformin levels can build up in the body which can increase the risk of lactic acidosis. Examples of these medications include renolazine, a heart medication, venditinib, a cancer drug, dolatogravir, an antiviral, and cimetidine, an acid-suppressing medication. And there you have it, a comprehensive guide to metformin. Whether you are a diabetic already taking this medication or have family members on it, you are now armed with valuable information and ready to be more in charge of your own health. Always remember though that individual responses to medications can vary, so always consult your healthcare provider before making any changes to your treatment plan. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more health related content. Catch you in the next video and as always stay healthy and stay amazing.